Okay, so I'm gonna do a toner transfer demonstration. When we get to the final project, I like to show some experimental procedures and things that'll maybe speed up the drawing process. Um, so Jerry's got this idea for a clock up in the corner of his composition. And so he printed this off <clears throat> on a laser jet. It's gotta be a laser jet because um, the ink is toner based, it's melted into the paper. And that's the only way that acetone is the only chemical that we can use to liberate that and inkjet wouldn't work as such. So he's got this kind of worked out here. He knows he wants it in that corner. So he made some marks here. So we're gonna be using acetone to do this. You can use fingernail polish remover too. Um, I have used, oh, what's that orange stuff? Uh, yeah, Goo Gone works. Um, cit citrus stripper works. It's just really stinky and sometimes it leaves your substrate orange a little bit. Okay, so we want, the idea here is that we want to be able to flip it back and forth because we're not going to transfer the whole thing all at once. You want to apply your acetone to something and then to your paper because if you get too much acetone all over the surface of this, it's just gonna like liberate that toner. It's gonna bleed all over the place. So I'm just using these like makeup thingies. I don't like to get a lot of this on my hands either because it dries your hands out. But if you're doing it effectively, you should be able to actually see through. I'm using a credit card here. Um, I like to use a bone folder. Sometimes if you're using a good brayer, you can get it to transfer. The toner dries pretty fast, but if you apply the pressure quickly enough, you'll be able to get that toner to liberate off. So I'm just gonna work sections at a time. A lot of times I'll do this outside, especially if I'm at home, because the chemical fumes can get kind of nasty. Once that toner or acetone has dried, there's really no transfer happening. So that's again why you want to do short bursts of this. And of course, Jerry's not just going to use the toner as a drawing element. He's going to work back into it. It's just a good way to get some information up there. And he printed the, uh, the clock backwards because that text was important to see. Otherwise, you'd get an offset image. It would go backwards. Sometimes that's what you want. Sometimes like in Jerry's case, you're gonna want to prepare an offset image there. It's like I just have one more section to hit. The other thing too is having a, having a photocopy that's a little darker than maybe you want will make it to where you can get more of that toner to transfer over. A little bit more down here. I do this sometimes to get information from like a, like if I make a drawing and I want to put this onto like a relief block for a woodcut or something. I'll do this just to get some toner on there and then I'll draw back over it. Kind of helps me transfer my imagery quickly so I don't have to redraw. I feel like I got enough information there. That texture's cool. I think you're gonna have a good time working with that. So, all right. The trial's over. Now it's time to get it on good paper. I'm just taking these things that I photocopied. Um, so I believe this was aluminum foil that I photocopied several times and it's got a, just a lot of crazy texture going on. So I'm gonna get some of this information over here just as a place to start. Um, these are crunched up pieces of paper that I've messed around with. So I took a lot of the extra toner elements that were just black out of here because I don't want to have to contend with that. I kind of like that organization here. So I think I'm gonna, I like to work very collage inspired. Just get me something to start with and then I jump off from there. Very automatism style, something from nothing. So I used to have an assignment drawing one where we started with nothing and tried to make something. Takes on a lot of imagination. I think students had a hard time with that. Not a very popular project. Okay, need a credit card. Or my insurance card. Yeah. 
those insurance premiums come in handy when I need to do a transfer. <laughs> okay, so a little bit of toner on there and I'm gonna start with this little guy over here. This is thicker paper than I was using before. It's paper that I normally use for paper lithography and so I may have to add more toner or acetone rather to get that toner to liberate, but we'll see what happens. Oh, I'm getting a good transfer there. So I think my intentions are to work with India ink, probably do a lot of micron pens, stippling, because I want my media to blend with the toner transfer. I don't want the transfer to look obvious. It's kind of like one of those mixed media tenants. I like that pretty well. Maybe a little more black out here. You can see on this really, really white, hot press watercolor paper that it's accepting this toner beautifully. The newsprint I think was a little light. It just isn't, it doesn't have the same paper fibers and contrast. I'm using masking tape. It's not, it's like true masking tape. It's not pulling any of my paper off here. They make transfer pens as well. Chart pack colorless marker blenders. They're pretty handy to, for doing toner transfers and small things. Big stuff like this, you really wanna use like a solvent. Yeah, I'm liking this. thing about this is that these decisions are pretty permanent. Um, I am not going to be able to erase this toner off my paper. But I kind of like starting with nondescript information anyway and then pursuing from there. I like that as a working method. to open the windows after this. Okay. I'm liking that pretty well. I think I'm gonna go with a little overlapping here. Go try something like that. Now if I didn't want to stick this down to my paper, I could tape my paper down to this other piece and then tape my hinge here. If I'm gonna do that, I probably better hit the other corner. Okay, probably need to get a little bit more, get a fresh one. Cotton balls work great for this too. So they seem to hold that toner really well. So what it doesn't evaporate. I'm gonna start with this emergent area. I don't know that I want that to go everywhere, so I'm gonna to try to stay within the boundaries of what I see here. Kind of synthesize these two textures together into a form. Also, I also don't like That must be, this must be a, a lighter paper or I probably went with much higher contrast. Yeah, I, I try to avoid like if I have regularized borders like this cause there's nothing happening like that here. So I definitely don't wanna go all the way up to my edges. I'm just gonna kinda like, if I can keep it dry, it just won't print there. So I'm kind of like, using this to develop my form. Oh man, that is really satisfying. That came out sweet. I'm gonna go ahead and complete this texture.
You can do this on lithographic stones too and they, they ink up. This toner will accept lithography ink. I think the only thing I'm not very happy with is that this is so light. So I'll have to do a lot more work in there. But I think I'm going to do like some repetition of that. I'm going to drop some of this in here. Get that corner filled up. Yeah, I like that repetition happening. Okay, now it's about trying to figure out what I'm going to do with this thing and develop it some some more meaningful information. Okay, never mind. I want to do another spot. <laughs> it kind of gets addictive after a while because you can just keep printing, printing, printing. What's the matter? Okay, now I'm happy. <laughs> Excellent. That's it.